Hey, warm well, welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday the 5th of August. I've got some news from Australia, which isn't quite as good as we would hope, and the United States, which also is not as good as we would hope, and from the UK, which is looking better than we'd hoped, but we'll have to consider that. I just want to start off, though, with a few um, orientation slides, just to think about the more global picture, really. Um, United Kingdom, there was that very slight upturn in cases yesterday. Interesting to see what happens today. But there's no question now. People, everyone seems to agree the trend is downwards, whereas people agree that the trend in the United States, as we see, is definitely upwards. Ireland levelling off to going down. South Africa's had a bit of an upward blip, unfortunately. Canada still low, lowish. Uh, Australia, unfortunately, going up. A uh, new number of COVID-19 patients in hospital per million, which, of course, is the, the key parameter that we, uh, we're worried about. We don't want people to be hospitalised. If people get common cold type symptoms, that's not such a big deal. Um, United States hospitalisation is going up quite dramatically and um, much more so in particular areas. The, the hospitalisation pressure in the States is really quite patchy. Um, then the United Kingdom, um, well, yeah, you can see that squiggle as well as I can, more or less level. Ireland still under some pressure, as we learned from when we talked to PJ recently, and Canada um, looking fairly good, it has to be said. New daily confirmed COVID-19 cases per million, looking at the Americas, so Chile, Ecuador, Belize, Mexico, actually, Mexico has just gone on to the UK uh, red list. So there's about 6,000 people actually in Mexico from the UK at the moment. And uh, they'll be disappointed to learn that if they're not back by Sunday, they'll have to do the hotel quarantine. And the cost of that has gone up to well over £2,000. So um, really quite expensive as Mexico goes onto the, uh, onto the UK red list. Um, Guatemala, Brazil, Argentina... Um, thankfully coming down now was very high but unfortunately we now that we see as far as the Americas go um, the United States is leading the uh, leading the Americas. New daily confirmed COVID-19 cases per million in Asia. Now um, Malaysia still going up. United Kingdom have left there for comparison. United States for comparison. Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, Cambodia. Now cases in Thailand are going up Vietnam, Myanmar, Burma, what was Burma, and Cambodia are also going up, we believe, from all the information that we are getting. And of course, the reason that this doesn't look particularly accurate on here is the uh, the state of testing. So this is the testing conditions. Now, to be fair, the, the testing in the States isn't that good. It's kind of down there somewhere, but it, it is going up now. So United Kingdom down slightly, but there again, the cases are down. Malaysia a lot below the UK, as you see, but um, not too far away from other European countries. But what, what what's happening in Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam and Myanmar in terms of testing um, is basically there's no information available on that. So um, we know, but we know, we do know that cases are going up in those countries. So they are a concern and one that we'll be keeping an eye on. Now, moving on to Australia. Um, so this is the data from Australia just now from the Australian Government Department of Health. New South Wales, 262 new cases in the 24-hour period. Capital Territory is none, which is great. Northern Territory is none. Queensland, 16. Um, South Australia, Tassie, Victoria, 4. And Melbourne's just gone into a lockdown now. Western Australia, 1 in terms of locally acquired cases. So unfortunately, we're still seeing New South Wales, Sydney, Greater Sydney area, mostly in the Greater Sydney area ahead there. Uh, Victoria, five mystery cases. So they're starting a seven day lockdown. Brisbane's in a lockdown and Sydney has got restrictions. So, so I mean, that, that's actually Melbourne's. Let me think. It's probably about the sixth lockdown they've had in Melbourne now. Seven day lockdown, even though they've only got five mystery cases because they want to stop this if they can, as they have stopped it in the past. In New South Wales, Sydney area, though, we are seeing that the Delta variant is much harder to get rid of than previous variants. And, um, well, 
to be quite honest, it could go either way. It's looking like it's going to be rumbling on at least for some time. 262 new cases in New South Wales. That's a lot to try and eradicate the virus, which, of course, is the aim. World Health Organization uh, have called for a halt to booster shots because they want the vaccines to be shared out. This is Dr. Chedros. We cannot and we should not accept countries that have already used most of the global supply of vaccines using even more of it while the world's vulnerable people remain unprotected. Now, nothing definite on booster shots yet. I mean, there are booster shots being given in some places for people that need it or haven't responded. UK may be doing booster shots. The United States is considering doing booster shots. But the point is, I mean, if, if, if the booster shots weren't given in richer countries, it's not as if the vaccines would be transported lock, stock and barrel to poorer countries, which would be nice. But um, I must say Dr. Tedros is being somewhat unrealistic here. I mean, I, I agree it's not over for anyone till it's over for everyone. We should have a massive campaign of vaccinating poorer countries, but it does seem to be happening. And to be quite honest, the World Health Organization has lost so much credibility along the way that um, I'm not really sure it's a suitable group to lead now. So COVAX, for example, vaccination program, aimed to deliver 2 billion vaccine doses this year, 20% of the population of the needy vulnerable countries. So far, they've done 178 million and they wanted 2 billion. I mean, really, it, it, it probably is time for someone else to be put in charge of this operation now. But the World Health Organization is what we've got. Um, personally, I'd like to see a, a European, UK, uh, US, um, Australia, um, Canada, of course, um, collaboration to organise this with, a, with, a, with an overseeing, something like a czar in charge of it, someone who's actually going to kick some butts and get things done. But um, alas, uh, the COVAX programme strolls on unfortunately and meanwhile people just aren't getting the vaccines that they need which is completely tragic of course now the united states itself cases well pretty high 146,698 the last 24 hours up 65 percent week on week anthony fauci said the cases could double by the fall by the autumn uh so they could um, hospitalizations up 46 percent on the week deaths 660 the last 24 hours up 33 percent on the week fully vaccinated though this is slightly encouraging now 50 percent of the population actually on the cdc site it said something like 49.6 or something but by now it probably is 50 percent because there's been an increase in interest in vaccination in the states for obvious reasons which of course is good so we see um, this is the uh, daily cases going up in the States, trending up quite dramatically. The latest figures are even higher than that, as we've just said, 160,000. Um, likewise, deaths also going up in the States. Um, well, yeah, up quite a bit there, aren't they, really? As we said, deaths were up 33% uh, on the week. Um, Vaccines-wise, so... Just gone over the 70% of adults that President Biden wanted for the 4th of July there. So pretty well behind, really. Um, but good to see that, um, as we said there, 49.8% of the population. That's the whole population fully vaccinated. So lots of information there. And always, of course, I post these uh, links for you to peruse on your own. Um, get the latest up to date data. But definite upward trends and looking like it's going to carry on increasing. According to Dr. Fauci's thinking, well, when does fall start? August, September, October. So two, three months, unfortunately, we're going to get these increases in the States. Um, now, other th slightly concerning things in the States, as we said, the hospitalisation pressure is patchy. Uh, but New Orleans, Dr. Mark Klein, we're seeing some very sick kids, which, of course, is pretty bad news. Under 17s are 20% of admissions in New Orleans, um, much higher than it was. Uh, brighter side, FDA to fully approve Pfizer soon. Now, I'm not quite sure what all the implications of full approval are, but it will mean that uh, industries, companies and national bodies will be in a much stronger position to mandate vaccines. So I'm expecting a lot more vaccine mandating in the States when the Pfizer full approval comes through. Um, Moderna full approval is going to take longer. 
but Pfizer full approval. It's not going to be days. We're probably talking about where are we now? 5th of August. We're probably talking about the end of August, beginning of September, something like that. And unfortunately, still in the States, 90 million people not eligible who are getting sick now and getting hospitalised now. It's almost a country within a country, as we've said, um, which is uh, still highly vulnerable. US international, <coughs> US international arrivals <coughs> must be vaccinated once restrictions are lifted. US cases lower than expected. Uh, sorry, no, so that, that's the end of the US. That's the end of the US, sorry. So once the restrictions on travel are lifted in the United States, it's going to be mandated, at least, at least if the president gets his way, that um, people have to be doubly vaccinated to get into the United States. Now, um, United Kingdom, cases lower than expected after the 19th of July. There's no question that this is looking like it's fairly good news. Now, just skipping on to the numbers from the UK and just seeing if it's being updated. It hasn't been updated for the past 24 hours and the time is... Time has just gone four o'clock, so this could be updated any minute, actually. Uh, so we'll probably just keep an eye on that. Um, but let's uh, let's think about other aspects of the UK, first of all. Now, Sajid Javid, of course, had said we could be up to 100,000 cases a day. Neil Ferguson said we could be up to 200,000 cases a day. Now, um, to, be, to be quite honest, uh, um, the reputation of these gentlemen is now somewhat tarnished by this, perhaps Neil Ferguson. Sajid Javid, probably less so. Um, but they were fair to warn about this. But there does seem to have been a strategy here. A spokesman from the government unofficially has said, we knew we had to range th things back a bit and make people more cautious because some pretty poor messaging had been given out, even by cabinet ministers on things like mask wearing, unfortunately. Professor Hunter, University of East Anglia, we've reached some sort of equilibrium. A further surge in cases related to the 19th of July is now unlikely. So that's looking promising. So we'll accept that from Professor Hunter. Big unknown is what will happen in autumn, of course, which, of course, we agree with. Now, to be fair on Neil Ferguson and to be fair on Sajid Javid, um, there were huge unknowns and they did say these were unknowns and they did say these were worst case scenarios. And everyone's delighted. I'm delighted Sajid Javid, Neil Ferguson are all delighted it hasn't been how it was but the big thing that was difficult to predict was we kind of knew where the vaccination program was going we kind of knew the transmissibility of the delta variant but what was difficult to predict was how much people would let their hair down after the 19th of july because if they um sort of went a bit crazy after the uh, 19th of july then uh, the cases could have been so this is that this is that this is the hospitalizations hospitalizations could have been well, it could have been over that level, which is 3,000. Pretty frightening to think about. And that would have meant that lockdown restrictions would have to come back in almost certainly. Um, latest hospitalizations yesterday were under 800. So people have not uh, gone mad after the restrictions. So we're pleased to see that happened, hasn't happened. And this has happened. Social interactions are only fairly level. Most people have carried on being very cautious. We have not ripped the pants out of the... Um, easing of restrictions as Jonathan Van Tam advised. So this is the reason why the cases are so reasonable, we think. And of course, this is combined with the summer, with the good weather we've had lately, with the schools being off, with somewhat reduced testing, it has to be men it has to be said. Um, you know, apparently quite a lot of companies have been encouraging their workers to delete the NHS app and they've been um, I can't remember, it's about 30, 30, 40 percent less pings this week. There's been a lot less pings, which does reflect a genuine downturn, we believe. But it also does represent people not um, keeping their NHS app on or uh, deleting the app. So we can't read too much into that. But the, the, the consensus of opinion overwhelmingly in the UK is that um, cases are down. And likewise, health care, um, if we actually look at admissions to hospital there um well 727 was the number the last 24 hours uh, now this hasn't been updated today <laughs> as we say any minute <laughs> but not yet and the people in hospital also starting to go down slightly which is good and cases have uh 
oh, they've just been updated just as we've been talking and they're up to uh, 30,215 over the 24 hour period. So slightly up, but still looking pretty manageable at that because bearing in mind the hospitalizations, which has not yet been updated, <laughs> um, but they are, there's still strain here. There's no question about that, but these are manageable. And, and what, what I say, what I mean there is th these are not going to cause the government to change the mind on um, of the current restrictions. Uh, Professor Mike Tin, uh, Tildesley, University of Warwick, um, doesn't expect a significant resurgence unless there's a new variant. Well, let's hope there's not. Um, but given the success of the vaccination programme, I think we can be pretty confident. Well, pretty pleased to hear that you're a pretty confident, Professor. Excellent. Thank you. And he does point out that during a bad flu season, there can be more than 100 deaths and 1,000 hospitalisation, uh, 1,000 hospital admissions every day. And that can go on for a couple, to a couple of months, even three months in a bad flu season. So we are, of course, we're not in the flu season now, we're in the middle of summer. But um, even show, it shows that we are at manageable levels at the moment, although this can still have tragic consequences for individuals. Uh, but the professor here does fear the next flu season because basically there's been no flu at all. Um, no flu at all, essentially, um, last, last flu season. Immunity will have waned somewhat and there is a risk of significant influenza outbreaks. That's, that's possible. Now, anecdotal reports about more young adults and young people being hospitalised and uh, certainly as we saw in New Orleans there, it's certainly the case. Amanda Pritchard, though, is the new NHS chief executive, gone into post, I don't know, today maybe, ju ju just, just gone into post anyway. So uh, she's had to hit the ground running, hasn't she? Uh, one in five admissions in hospital, at one, one in five people in hospital at the moment is between the ages of 18 and 34. So 20% of people are in this young adult age group who are in hospital. About 1,000 young adults were currently very, really unwell in hospital, so 1,000 young adults quite unwell at the moment in hospital and if we can compare this to the level of young adult admissions it's a lot higher than last winter so last winter it was 5.5 percent of the total admissions now it's um 20 percent of the total admissions and of course this is largely due to the fact that so many older people are protected by vaccine so that looks like a pretty bad statistic and it is but it's actually also highlighting that it's good in that a lot of old people are not getting sick because of the vaccine protection uh, Patricia, uh, Amanda Pritchard goes on to say um, NHS still experiencing real pressure, which is true because we've got this terrible da backlog of cases as well. She's obviously a very strong vaccine advocate. NHS teams are put, uh, putting on pop-up clinics and walk-in centres in addition to around 1,600 permanent sites to make it as easy as possible to protect yourself, your family and your friends. So clearly um, making it much easier for particularly, it has to be said, the young adult grouping to get vaccinated. Now, I'm going to briefly look at um, alcohol drinking over the pandemic now, having, uh, well, let's just say having made mistakes in this area myself. Um, interesting to follow what's been going on. Now, on the face of it, it doesn't look too bad. So th th this, this group, uh, um, the collate the data on alcohol consumption, alcohol related harm. Uh, throughout the pandemic compared to previous years and restrictions led to changes in the availability of, of alcohol so for 31 weeks um, you couldn't go to the pub for a pint it was it, it changed so that's been a big factor but of course alcohol readily available in supermarkets um, unlike uh, areas like South Africa where there was actually uh, monitoriums on the selling of alcohol uh, you've always been able to buy as much alcohol as you can afford even at the worst parts of the lockdown from UK supermarkets. All too convenient, really. Changes in alcohol consumption. So its total volume of duty paid alcohol was actually 1.2 down on the pandemic year compared to the previous year. So that looks good. But then when you break it down a bit, wine and spirits were up 8.9. So wine sales up 8.9, spirit sales up 7.3, cider and beer both down because of course it's cider and beer that people tend to drink when they go out for when they go out for a drink and the premises were shut down. So that's not too surprising, but of course wine and spirits uh, contain a lot more alcohol. Wine's typically about what 12% alcohol these days. 
spirits are typically uh, 40% alcohol unless you buy the cheap stuff when it's 37.5% alcohol but that's still a lot of alcohol and um, it's it's easy to drink a lot with stronger drinks as opposed to cider which is typically 6 or 6% 6 alcohol 5 6% alcohol even 4% beers which is typically uh three four five percent alcohol now the thing is the heaviest buying quartile accounted for four so the heaviest buying quartile the top 25 percent of people that bought alcohol accounted for 42 percent of sales and the top 50 percent uh, of, of people buying alcohol accounted for 63 percent of the sales so what's happened what seems to have been happening is people that don't drink much drank less during lockdown and people that were drinkers anyway drank more during lockdown. So we got the problem drinkers drinking even more. And the moderate drinkers not going out for a pint, so drinking less. You know, there's basically two sorts of people. Well, there's, you could argue there's three sorts of people. There's, there's those that drink and those that don't drink. But of those that do drink, there's those that drink socially. They'll go out for a pint with the mates. Fair enough. But there's the the other the other half of the, of us drinkers, and and we drink for the psychotropic effect of the alcohol. We, we might rationalise to to ourselves that it's the uh, it's the taste or it's the social interactions. But there's a good chunk of us drink because we like the effect on the brain. It, and and the these these were the uh, the twenty five percent that increased their drinking the most during lockdown, and the fifty percent that also increased their drinking most during lockdown. So the top half drinking more, the bottom half drinking less. And um, that means that the alcohol-related problems actually went up because most of the alcohol-related problems are in the heavier drinkers. So suggesting a polarisation in drinking. People who were drinking more during the pandemic tended to be the heavier drinkers. So slightly complicated pattern there, but uh, interesting. Now let's just see if the healthcare figures have been updated before we close today. Uh, so cases, <clears throat> cases have been updated slightly up. Healthcare, uh, no, not been updated yet. So there you go. You're just going to have to look at that site yourself for updates. Okay, that is us for today. Thank you um, very much for watching.